Some people hear the Lord as they look at nature. Some people hear the Lord when they listen to music. Some people hear the Lord when they see people. Saint Joseph heard the Lord when he was asleep. Sleep is a blessing. It is a blessing from the Lord. And people who are not able to sleep have deep, big problems. Our body needs to sleep, not just in order to rest, not just in order to recover energy. Our body needs to sleep because our body needs to sleep in the Lord. What happens when we sleep? We lose control. We let go of our controls. At work, St. Joseph praised God. In his sleep, St. Joseph listened to God. What is the joy of sleeping? The joy of sleeping is in being able to let go. In our waking hours, we cling, we clutch, we grab, we hold on. When we sleep, we let go, we let go of our controls. And when we let go of our controls, God is given a chance to control us. How is your sleep? Are you able to let go? Are you able to let go of controls? And are you able to allow the Lord to control your life? There is joy in sleeping. There is also joy in letting go. And if you really let go, like St. Joseph, God is going to speak to you marvels, miracles. Let go, sleep in the Lord, and let the Lord speak to you. And what a joy it will be as the Lord speaks to you in your dreams. Be a dreamer. Be like St. Joseph, the dreamer. If the first joy of Joseph is to receive the angel in his dream that Jesus will be born, the second joy of Joseph is to see the actual birth of the Lord. And uh, it is Christmas. That is the first Pasco. That is the first crossing over. When the Lord crossed over, from heaven to earth, and now we celebrate the crossing over from death into life. At Christmas, who teaches us? Let the children teach you. Let the simplicity, even the naivety of children, become our teachers. Some of us, as we grow older, become too sophisticated, become too intellectual, sometimes hardened at heart, sometimes close-minded. But at Christmas, St. Joseph looks at the child, and the child is our teacher. At Christmas, don't listen to the priests. Don't listen to the theologians. Listen to children, because the children are the priests of Christmas. The children teach us the joy of Christmas. Christmas is not Good Friday. Christmas is a love story. Good Friday is a different story. Both are stories of love, but don't mix them up. Christmas is not Good Friday. Let the joy, let the childlike joy of Christmas speak to you. Let the second joy of Joseph, the birth of the Lord, speak to you. Let the children sing. Let the children dance. Let the children shout. Let the children cling to us and teach us the joy of being children, the joy of being simple, the joy of being Jesus in the manger. The third joy of St. Joseph is to receive the name of Jesus. His name will be Jesus. He will save his people 
from their sins. Today I ask you, are you happy? As I asked you that question, I felt a lump in my throat and my tears wanted to flow because the question, are you happy, is a painful question to hear. Some of us are not even able to answer. Jesus comes to save His people from their sins. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. Are you happy? Perhaps more important than the question, am I happy, is the question, is my life meaningful? Maybe we should ask the question, is my life meaningful? There is no vaccine for pain. There is no vaccine against problems. There is no vaccine against difficulties. The Lord did not come to vaccinate us from difficulties. The Lord only came, and before ascending into heaven, the Lord said to us, I will be with you until the end of the ages. That is the secret of a meaningful life. It is a life with problems, with sickness, with difficulties, with joblessness, with betrayals, with denials, with infidelity, with lying, with murder, with crime. But we can still be happy. Why? Because the Lord is with me. The third joy of St. Joseph is that if you ask St. Joseph, are you happy? He might hesitate to answer. But if you ask him, is your life meaningful? I am sure he will say, yes, because God is with me. You don't have to be happy all the time, but your life can be meaningful all the time if you allow the Lord to stay by you. He is risen. He is not dead. There is no reason to be living a life of discouragement, of hopelessness. Jesus is our hope. My life is meaningful because God is with me. The fourth joy of Joseph is to see Simeon, an old man, happy smiling, beaming, with pride, with joy, with excitement, because he was holding the promised Messiah. And for Simeon to exclaim, now you can let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation. His eyes have seen the promise fulfilled. And Joseph was a witness to that. In his old age, God rewarded Simeon for his fidelity by seeing the prophecies of old fulfilled right before his eyes. The tragedy facing us is our failure to love. Our failure to love those whom God has entrusted to us. And the second tragedy is our failure to allow the Lord to shine through us. To prevent ourselves from being happy. To prevent ourselves from being excited. Simeon never lost that excitement because every day of that life unto old age, he loved, and every day of that life, unto old age, he trusted in the Lord. Let the joy of Simeon, as seen by the eyes of Joseph, be our joy also. Today, the Lord says to you, you have permission to be happy. Be happy. Do not be afraid to be happy, because all your hopes, all your plans, 
submit them before the Lord, you will see all those dreams come true. Now you can let your servant go in peace because the word has been fulfilled. I have seen the salvation promised me. Simeon, teach us to be happy. Simeon, Joseph, teach us not to be afraid to be happy. And Jesus, show us the face of the fulfillment of all the promises of old. The fifth joy of Joseph is to live in Egypt. Yes, you heard it right. They were in exile in Egypt, but it was a joy to be in Egypt. Why was there joy in Egypt? Where was the joy in Egypt? It is the joy from being honest with yourself. They knew they were not Egyptians. They knew they were in a strange land. People could be hostile. People could cultivate brood anger against them. People could be suspicious. Why are they here? But there can be joy in spite of criticism. There can be joy in spite of opposition. There can be joy in spite of the angst that we feel against us by those around us. Where does it come from? From two sources. The first is humility. The second is honesty. Humility to acknowledge that we are only creatures, we are only disciples, and therefore we cannot be better, we cannot be higher than the Master, who was a sign of contradiction, who was opposed. The other one is honesty. To be honest enough to say, I feel afraid, I am uncertain, but please, Lord, consider my honesty as my reason for being led to happiness. Be honest, be humble. People will oppose you. You cannot please everybody. You might have to live in a strange land, but if it is God's will for you, so be it. Choose honesty, choose humility. No matter what they say, stay focused on the Lord. Live beyond the criticism. Live beyond the opposition. Find peace in your heart. The sixth joy of Joseph is to be able to return to Nazareth. Nazareth is home. Nazareth is hidden. Nazareth is like the secret life of Jesus. We do not know what happened in Nazareth from the time they returned from Egypt until he was 30 years old. Maybe Joseph taught Jesus how to talk, how to walk, how to hold the hammer, how to hold a nail, how to sew. Joseph was teacher of the teacher. What a great honor to teach the teacher. God is our teacher. If you want him to teach you, there is only one thing that is required. Be honest. Be naked before the Lord. You don't have to pretend. Be honest. Be stripped of hypocrisy before the Lord. There is no joy for the liar. There is no joy for the hypocrite. There is no joy for the dishonest. There is only joy in truth because joy can only be given to those who live in truth, to those who live in freedom. You want to be happy? Be taught by the Lord. You want to be taught by the Lord? Strip yourself of hypocrisy. Be who you are. The Lord does not expect you to be perfect before you approach Him. You may be dirty. You may be blackened. You may be soiled. Just tell the Lord, Lord, I am not perfect. My hands are bloodied and my tongue is dirty. 
my heart is dirty, my mind is dirty, I am not lovable, but I want to be saved, Lord. Tell him that. Stop the pretense, stop the hypocrisy, be happy in the truth. The last joy of St. Joseph is to find Jesus in the temple. Mary said on behalf of Joseph, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I were searching for you. We were anxious. Like the deer that longs for running streams, my soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. Joseph knew for whom he thirsted, and it is for Jesus. Some people don't know for whom they thirst. They only know they are thirsty. Some people don't know who can satisfy that thirst. They only know the hunger. They only know the longing. They only know the thirst. But worst of all, some people don't know they are thirsty. Because the poor substitutes are very convincing. Because the poor substitutes are so strong, they can be intoxicating. My soul is thirsting for you. And the joy of Joseph is to be able to see the Lord and to recognize that that thirst is now ended because the Lord is mine. What are you thirsting for? What are you looking for? What makes you happy? What makes you sad? Where are you going? What do you want to make of your life?